Have you ever wondered what happens if you electrically zap your ear for science? It turns out a lot actually. You can stimulate your brain, you can improve your health. If it sounds too good to be true, it's not, it's real. Today we're going to be talking about stimulating your vagus nerve via the auricular branch. So that's the one that innervates your ear and how incredibly safe it is. The reason why we're doing this is because first of all, this video is sponsored by a company that creates devices that can stimulate your vagus nerve via the auricular branch. So the one that innervates your ear and there are approved for medical use in Europe. So they've clearly been tested for safety and safety component is one area that has been of great interest to me. And by the way, if you're interested in this device, check out link in the video description for a discount. So we'll see if by the end of this video, you'll be persuaded or not. And safety has been interested to, of great interest to me. I've already did one video in the past when I looked at the, all the different studies related to depression and how depression could be treated via stimulating your vagus nerve. And let me show you the, the scenery a bit. And the company sent me this article, which the article is basically on what's the most effective way and safest way of stimulating your vagus nerve. It's a very short article, so check it out. It's a very fun read, but I decided to study the scientific references that were used in support of their claims. And that resulted in creation of these mini series. So the first video I did on, uh, in this mini series was about comparison of using devices in, in comparison to natural methods. So check that out. Second video was about why activation of vagus nerve via neck might lead to unwanted side effects. So there is a new emerging science on that. So check that out as well. Last video in the series was on how vagus nerve is involved in the process of aging. And right now we're going to be talking about the safety specifically of activating a vagus nerve via that auricular branch and via skin. The reason why is because this is the method that is becoming massively popular precisely because of the safety record and ease of use for, for the users. and. And this is the first meta-analysis of its kind. So what do I mean by that? Meta-analysis are the best type of studies we can possibly have in terms of support. That's where you look at all of the studies published in the past and you combine them together. And this was the first one of its kind looking specifically at that transcutaneous auricular vagus nerve activation or neuromodulation. This is where we're talking about transcutaneous means activation by our skin by putting electric current via skin and auricular, of course, we're talking about activation of the part of your vagus nerve that uh, innervates your ear. The, e, the one that is really taking over the world by storm just because of how easy it is and how safe it is. And you'll see right away why, why I'm saying this, this. So these guys, I believe this was published maybe in 2022. And They've, the authors found 177 studies that could be included in this, which is great, encompassing over 6,300 individuals. Again, great because this is a large number. We do want this number to be high. Ideally, I would love that number to be at least 10 times higher. The higher that number is, the, the, the greater the certainty of accuracy of the information. So this is why we want that number to be higher. But this is definitely a great start. And another great thing is that of these 177 studies, about 55 of these were randomized clinical trials, which are the highest form of causality that can be used in medicine. So that's wonderful as well. And they only focused these authors for adverse events via vagus nerve stimulation by the method I'm talking about. And what did they find out? They found out that 55% of all the publications never even mention anything related to adverse events. The authors believe that this is because there were no observed adverse events. 
And the reason why they, they say that is specifically for two reasons. These studies were mostly in healthy populations, number one. And number two, they actually did contact some of the authors of some of the studies to verify as well. And the authors of the study said, yes, we did not observe anything and we just didn't even comment anything on, uh, on that. So there is that. 25% of the studies did mention at least one adverse event being mentioned in any of these studies. What's cool is that of these, 35 of these studies also mentioned not just the adverse events, but also number of participants. And this allowed the authors to do something really cool. It allowed them to report the frequency of adverse events. And they reported it in terms of 100,000 minutes of stimulating your vagus nerve, which is a lot. Think of it uh, instead as 1,667 hours. And what they found is that if you stimulate your vagus nerve for 1,667 hours, there are approximately 12.8 adverse events recorded. So one way to put it is the following. If 1,667 individuals were to stimulate their vagus nerve for one hour, all at the same time, approximately 12.8 adverse events would be recorded amongst that entire population. Another way to put it is the following. If you're one individual and you have a device like the, like the one I'm discussing today, then if you were to stimulate your vagus nerve for 1,667 hours, one hour per day, that's four and a half years of use, and that would result in 12.8 adverse events. Now, what are the most three common adverse events? They mention, I hope I remember this right, but it was something like 7.1 times out of 100,000 minutes of use was headache, Oh, sorry, no, sore ear. So the great news is that basically the most common adverse events are localized, so your ear was sore. And then the other two at about seven and 6.9 times out of 100,000 minutes, I think it was headache and uh, tingling uh, sensation. So uh, <laughs> great headache and Tingling sensation basically sounds like your Monday morning, but with science, so <laughs> good way to go. The take home message is that activating your vagus nerve via the auricular branch, so the branch that goes and innervates your ears, ear, and specifically the device I'm talking about stimulates your vagus nerve via the tragus, which is this lip right there in your ear. And, and yeah, we're talking about simply localized events. But it's the next thing that these guys did that was really cool. And they wanted to focus on what are the severe adverse events. And they took all of these studies. They saw, they looked at what adverse events were ever mentioned. And they used these international criteria for scoring severe adverse events. It can be, there is a grade that can be assigned and they looked for grade three to five. Grade three are severe adverse events that are non-life threatening. Grade four are severe adverse events that are life threatening. And grade five is if you die as in, because of the adverse event, because of the therapy you're, you're using. And they found of all of these studies, 177 studies, there were two severe adverse events reported that could be possibly or probably due to the vagus nerve stimulation, the auricular branch, and they were grade three because in those two instances, the individual had to be, the two different individuals had to be hospitalized. One of them was because they had a anxiety and worsening depression after, after device use, and another one, ended up with cancer, basal cell carcinoma. And it was suspected, well, it could be due to device, but it's what's next that the authors did that was really cool. And what they did is they used Bradfall, Bradfall 
Bradford Hill criteria for causality. So they really wanted to determine what were these severe, two severe adverse events in these two separate individuals caused because of the device use. And they use this Bradford Hill criteria. This has been established since 1965. It's one of the most commonly used criteria of causality in medicine. The only better and higher quality standard is randomized clinical trials, but those are not always applicable. And when they applied that criteria, the verdict was is not guilty. That's great news. Basically, they came to conclusion, no, these two events were not associated with the vagus nerve activation via the auricular branch. This was not the reason why, which is awesome, great. But that's on top of that, what's really cool is that in no way ever has in all these studies have ever cardiac severe adverse events been reported ever. And the reason why this is really good news, because remember, I was telling you in a previous, one of the previous episodes about the problems of activating your vagus nerve via neck because you can activate cardiac vagus nerve fibers amongst others and that can lead to some severe and very dangerous side effects. And what's interesting is that in these studies, approximately 80% of all these studies focus on the left, left ear. And the reason why is because we know that those severe heart events occur from stimulating the right hand side of your neck vagus nerve, so cervical vagus nerve, that means the vagus nerve in your neck. And because of that, this has spilled over to the auricular branch as well, but approximately 20% of all studies either stimulate the vagus nerve on the right side or on both sides, left and right, via ear. And nevertheless, no cardiac severe events have been ever reported and the authors conclude that technically it's totally safe for your heart to stimulate your vagus nerve via the auricular branch and the reason why is because and the reason why this is such an attractive method right now in medicine and why it's winning over for investigation in general is precisely because you don't induce those severe adverse events, especially the ones related to your heart. And the other ones you avoid is activating vagus nerve, nerves that innervate your throat and activate muscles in your throat. So you also avoid those side effects. And the reason why I was so interested in this is because I also collect my own testimonials from people. And here's a graph, you can see the reported benefits based on people talking to me, letting me know when they use this device that I'm promoting, how did it help them? That's what you see in pink. And in blue, how did it not help them? And there is one area where you could see chest pain. And that's the reason why I would have been very specifically interested in wanting to find more information about the safety, especially when it relates to heart. One of those individuals, for example, told me They've been experiencing chest pain even before they ever used vagus nerve neuromodulation device. But they, these side effects have been reported, so I graph them for you as well. But the take-home message is, is that apparently this is completely safe for your heart, at least from the accumulating data so far. So I thought that was awesome, very, very cool, very interesting, and I wanted to share that information with you, including my my testimonials. So the final take home message is that you can stimulate your vagus nerve via the auricular branch without the, without the just solo affecting your heart. So that's good. So now you have an option to use this device. If you have been using this device, please let me know, drop a comment, how it's been helping you versus not. Again, I want to collect those testimonials. And again, if you're interested in acquiring one of those devices, for all the numerous health benefits, then, then uh, check out the link below. 
and I've already made my top 10 list based on clinical studies how vagus nerve neuromodulation helps in different conditions. So check out that top 10 list video as well. And I'll see you guys next time. And uh, last but not least, I should mention, please follow me, subscribe, please um, like, give us a like, this is how we grow. YouTube loves it and so do we. And then check out my Patreon account, which is my private account. And if you're willing to be a sponsoring patron, then you will also get to vote which content makes it to YouTube and not all content from my private account makes it to YouTube. That's decided by you, the patrons, and there's additional perks, so check that out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. One more look where we are and we'll see you guys next time. We gotta get down off this mountain.